Hey everybody, this is Trevor Wade with the United Kennel Club. I'm the Coonhound Program Manager here, and I have Alan Gingrich with me, the Director of Hunting Ops, and we're gonna be discussing the rule changes coming for the Coonhound Program here for 2020. The rule changes happen every three years at United Kennel Club, so the way that works is hunters uh, send in their proposals every three years on rules they'd like to see changed. They are then taken to Autumn Oaks to the Breed Association. This last Autumn Oaks, they voted on these proposals, and uh, so we're gonna talk about the ones that they adopted. And those are this year, uh, change to tree closing time, a tree countdown, squalling rule change, uh, silent on track rules, uh, point values in your strike and tree column, slight change to the battling rule. Big one is the leash lock rule. That's gonna be a big one for us. Uh, running, treeing, or molesting off game, slight change there, and then also a slight change in dogs that aren't declared struck on or before the third bark, as well as calling the wrong dog. So with that said, we're, let's get started. Okay, in this clip we're going to be discussing the tree close time. The tree is going to be closing at three minutes after the first dog is declared treed, or tree is closed as soon as all dogs are declared treed, whether they're split or treed together. One other thing that'll come into play here is when you have one dog, whether you start with one dog in the cast or there's one dog remaining in the cast, that dog must hold its tree for three minutes. The only exception to that is at the end of the hunt, as soon as hunt time just expires, then you can go right in and handle that dog that has been declared tree. Right, and be sure to keep rule 11A in mind. We don't need you waiting around the full three minutes, wait for the three minutes to expire and then start heading to the tree. You can start cutting the distance as soon as the dog's declared tree and try to be there when the three minutes is up. So that also means you're going to be uh, walking a couple of minutes sooner than you might have under the five minute rule. So that will in fact speed up the pace of the hunt. One thing that's very important along with that is you might have some older hunters in the cast that aren't can't walk as fast. You'll have a lot of the younger hunters want to run the trees. It is the judge's responsibility to maintain a pace that is attainable by all members of the cast. That's very important for judges to remember and know that it is their responsibility to maintain that pace attainable by everybody in the cast. One thing that's kind of separate from that is that we're going to keep the stationary time at five minutes moving forward. Yeah. So this this. This one's fairly simple. Everything is just from five minutes to three minutes. One we didn't really see coming, but the rules committee passed it. So Blindsided us a little bit. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. One thing that they had in mind is our shorter hunt times. Sure, sure. So that's why they also wanted to shorten up this tree time. So there you go. Alrighty, in this video, we're gonna be discussing the newly implemented tree countdown. Uh, any, oh boy, this is a big one. It's a big one for us. <laughs> any dog that is declared tree two minutes after the first dog was declared tree will be assigned 25 points on that tree. Uh, just to make sure that you're aware, second and third tree are still available within those uh, first two minutes. So you can still get 75 and 50 tree points if you're treated within the two minutes. This was a big one for us. As a matter of fact, this has been on the on the uh, proposal for the last four, five, six rule changes and it just never passed until this year it finally did pass. Four to three. Four to three, yeah, <laughs> barely did. And I know there's a lot of hunters really excited about this one that do in fact uh, like this change here. One other thing to keep in mind, rule 4H will also be changed to read, dogs treeing but not declared treed when judge arrives will be assigned in minus 25 tree points on off game or a slick tree. Dogs shut out on strike on slick tree or off game will receive minus tree points only. What that means, we used to have a rule that says dogs treed but not declared treed when the judge arrived would get next available position. Next available in this case after two minutes is now always 25. As far as champion divisions, when it comes to off game, that obviously doesn't change. Those dogs are still scratched if it's off game. One of the things I'd like to point out, I see it happening quite a bit, and a lot of times it's guys coming over from other registries that uh, have a dog in their tree, but they don't tree it. I can tell you guys in UKC there is nothing to gain and you have everything to lose to not declare your dog tree. With this one, I think this is going to be well received. And uh, so, guys are, so. we had these in the super slams that we tried them for the last couple of years and we put it in for special rules for that, and the guys really liked it. I don't see any problems with this one at all. 
Okay, the next topics we're going to discuss is going to be the squalling at the tree rule and the silent on track rule. And we'll start out with the squalling rule. We're actually uh, going to eliminate rule 6U and allow squalling during all of shine time. So with the elimination of this rule, handlers are now able to squall, pull vines, tap trees, etc. for the duration of shine time regardless of what other dogs in the cast are doing. The United Kennel Club is one of the few registries that actually had a rule like this in place where you couldn't squall for a period of shine time. It used to be in the first seven minutes you could not squall and that was the case for a long time. And let, let's just talk a, uh, just for a second why that rule was implemented. Back in the old days it was, it was put in place to not penalize a dog for coming in after you have arrived and they they always felt like it would entice a dog to come in. In 2015 they changed this rule to from seven minutes down to two minutes. So in the last three years we've used this two minutes and it almost became a rule that is why do we even have this and a lot of hunters feel this way so this year the rules committee did in fact pass it so I think the hunters are going to love this change. You can now squall as soon as you start shining time you'll no longer hear of guys getting scratched that forgot that blew their squaller before that two minutes was up. I'm gonna have to come up with a different excuse there. This one will be a good one. And then the next one we'll talk about is the silent on track rule. And that uh, we're gonna be eliminating rule 6E if dog is continuously silent on track. And just keep in mind that a silent dog must still be declared struck before it can be treated. This is one there's been a lot of discussion on and probably some negative discussion why we would get rid of this. The other part of that is probably how many people have actually enforced, how many judges actually enforce this or can enforce it. Right. It is a tough one to enforce and long story short, the one thing is very important again, just because a dog may not have opened on track, the dog must still be declared struck before it can be declared treat. In this next clip, we're going to be discussing the rule change regarding running, treating, or molesting off game. The rule has been changed to state dogs must be seen running, treating, or molesting off game. The only addition to the current rule is the word seen that's been added in this case. In the past, uh, judges were instructed to make the call if they felt a dog was running deer, for instance, off game. A lot of times, a lot of experienced houndsmen will tell you they can easily tell if your dog is running, doesn't matter if it's their dog or somebody else's dog uh, is running a deer out of the country. We used to say to make that judgment call and make the call, but now with this change, uh, they have to see it. So that judgment doesn't even apply anymore. They have to see the off game in order uh, to scratch any dog. Next up, we're gonna be discussing the change uh, regarding point values in the strike and tree column on the scorecard. There's gonna be a change in rule 6Y to read, if scorecard lacks point values in the strike or tree columns, and after seeking additional information, the event official cannot satisfactorily determine the accurate score, affected dogs will be scratched. Um, this change will do away with automatically scratching a dog when the return scorecard lacks a value, whether it be plus, minus, circle, delete, in the strike or tree columns. So with this change, you'll no longer see handlers scratch for it for the most part, but that does not mean that the event official cannot scratch you if they cannot determine the accurate scoring of it. So it's still important and very important uh, for the handler to make sure they check their score, make sure everything's right on it before they sign off and turn it in. It's the easiest thing for a handler to do is to check your scorecard and uh, don't be that guy that always wants to blame the judge or it's somebody else should have made sure that was correct. The rules say it is the handler's responsibility to check their scores before signing it and it's one of the easiest things you can do. Do it. Now let's discuss the newly updated babbling rule. I'm going to read it for you just so I don't mess up like I did in the advisor column and leave a word out. So. Uh, if a question arises pertaining to a dog babbling when declared struck, a vote shall determine the scoring of strike points as follows. If the majority of the cast agrees that the dog was babbling, strike points shall be minus. If the vote results in a tie, strike points shall be deleted. And if a majority of a cast agrees the dog was not babbling, strike points shall remain assigned as called. This is uh, kind of a big one and one that does create some arguments in the woods as much as any situation probably on the, in the rules is babbling. You'll see that in the rules 
there's an asterisk next to the word babbling. Whenever there's an asterisk next to a word, that means we also have a definition in the rule book. The definition of it is a dog that is declared struck where no track is evident. One of the things that we deal with all the time in debates with this, whether there's an appeal on this, a dog got minus for babbling, what have you, is that prove it. The judge does not have to prove it. It's just a, it's a judgment call. It should be a solid judgment call based on experience, knowledge, helmsmanship again. The other thing that we hear all the time is that the rules state that the dog must carry a track out if it was declared struck in that first minute. That is another registry's rule, but not in UKC. There is no such thing like that. It's as simple as making a call, making a judgment call, that the dog has been declared struck where no track is evident. Now, a dog gets out a good ways, that's gonna be hard for any judge to make that call. The most common time when it happens is when you cut first cut dogs loose, dogs take off loose barking, babbling, and that are struck pretty quickly. But you probably see more dogs getting away with babbling than are actually hit for it. Basically, the only change to this rule is, is the judge still makes the call or not, and the only time this comes up or there's a ch where this change comes into play is if there is a question by any other member of the cast. And if a question does arise, you must ask it immediately. If you think a dog has been babbling, a call's not being made, ask it immediately. If the judge does make the call, you don't agree with it, there again, ask immediately. A tied vote will now result in deleted strike points versus the old rule where it took a majority vote to overturn the judge's call. Everything that we do in night hunts as far as the uh, judge's calls go, if there's a question on it, it takes a majority to overturn the judge's call. This would be one of the would be the only one where in the case where a majority is not reached, in that case you would now delete. Majority says the dog was not babbling, dog retains its strike points. Majority says the dog is in fact babbling, and strike points are minus. In this clip we're going to be discussing the new leash lock rule. And it's actually been passed to eliminate the leash lock rule altogether, unless all dogs are declared treed and cast decides to move to a new location after all trees have been scored. If a cast decides to move, hunt time shall be stopped while walking to trees with dogs on the leash. Hunt time shall only be called back in during shine time only. The one bullet point I have uh, regarding the leash lock rule is if, uh, if dogs in the cast are struck or treed in and after pulling your dog off of a scored tree, you'll have to wait for one of those dogs that are declared struck or treed in to open before you can release your dog in the hunting, same as it has been. If no dogs are struck or treed in, your hound will be immediately eligible for recast upon pulling it off the score tree, which is gonna be a little bit different, even if there's another dog treed in, or if all dogs are treed in, you're able to cut your hound loose and uh, compete for, a, for another track and tree there. Another thing we talk about is uh, after pulling your hound off a score tree, if any or all dogs in the cast or declared treat, you have the option to recast. So you have the option to leave your dog on the leash and head to uh, the other declared treat if you want, but you won't be able to cut your dog loose until the next opportunity arises, which would be after scoring the next dog's treat, or in the case where there's more than one dog declared treat out there, if one were to leave and another dog was still treat and declared treat, you would have the opportunity to leave the dog on the leash at that point also. If no other dogs are declared treat after scoring your treat, your dog must be released. Uh, recasting is mandatory in that situation. I think the, the biggest misconception about this proposal that we saw a lot of people talking about, uh, having conversations about, is that they still do have that option to recast. That still stays in. The rule itself is eliminate leash lock rule altogether unless all dogs are declared treed and cast decides to move to a new location. Right. Sometimes you do need to be able to get the dogs gathered up and move to a new location. So whenever you're deciding to move, uh, the cast decides this. So you have all dogs declared treed or maybe one on leash or whatever, one just scored. After scoring the first tree, when other all other dogs are declared treed, if the cast needs to move locations, at this point, you would call timeout while the scored dog is on the leash and while you're heading to the next dog's tree to score. The hunt time would only be running after that decision, decision is made during shine time only. So you have your first dog on leash, you're going to your second tree, you call timeout immediately while you're walking so you're not taking away hunt time. 
from these dogs. If a dog leaves its tree while the cast is en route with dogs in hand, time would need to be called back in and all leash dogs would need to be released at that time. And the other point is dogs can only be scored out of order when all dogs are declared treed, handled, and the cast needs to move to a new location. And we have added a new section to uh, Rule 11. Under Section 11, under Scoring Dogs, Section 11A is rules pertaining to prior to arriving at the tree. Section B is after arriving at the tree. Section C talks about split tree situations. And we've added another Section D to Rule 11, or Section 11, and it has everything to do with recasting. Basically, these recasting rules, and I think they're very self-explanatory and will help the hunters greatly the way we put it out in your new rule book. Under Section 11, Section 11D, all about recasting. In this video, we're gonna actually be discussing two rule changes. First one we're gonna to get to is declaring dog struck after the third bark. In a situation where dog is not declared struck on or before the third bark, after one minute of being turned loose, judge shall ask for a call and, must, and the dog must be declared struck on next bark or receive available strike position minus and reassigned on the scorecard. On the second offense, the judge will minus the available strike position and if the dog is not declared struck on the next bark after the judge asks for a call, that dog will be scratched. And on the third offense, the dog will just be scratched. This change is pretty straightforward. Basically what it does, instead of a two-part deal, the first time being minus, second time scratched, first time is now a warning. If the dog is not declared struck on that third bark, the judge is going to ask for a call on that dog. If the handler calls his dog struck on the next bark, being the fourth bark, then he will be issued a warning. But if he does not call it on the next bark, let's say it's bark five or six or whatever, that warning is no longer there for him. He's gonna get minus there. And the next one we're gonna be talking about is when you call the wrong dog. On the first offense for calling the wrong dog, it's actually gonna be a warning now. Um, on your second offense, the dog is gonna be minus your called strike points. And on the third offense, the dog is gonna be scratched. One of the reasons this one was, this rule was proposed had to do with kids hunts. Kids coming in and, and not being sure, maybe knowing their dog that well, not wanting to strike the wrong dog, or maybe uh, inadvertently calling the wrong dog so as not to penalize them too hard. And, and, and I think it's a good rule to give them a warning on that first offense. The last rule we're going to be discussing here is the new rule about being scratched for fighting. We're going to change the rule to scratch dogs for fighting or attempting to fight during hunt time only and shall further include while dogs are off leash and during any timeout periods during the hunt. This rule is going to prevent dogs from being scratched on the leash or in the dog box. I just want to make sure you guys know that any dog fights happening during timeouts or after the hunt while dogs are still off the leash could still result in dogs being scratched. The old rule was dogs could be scratched under the authority of the judge. Well, what is under the authority of the judge? The scorecard says as soon as the judge gets the scorecard from the Master Hounds at the club headquarters and his authority ceases when he turns it in at the same place. So technically a dog could be scratched out in the parking lot, in a dog box, and it did happen sometimes. And sometimes Unfortunately, guys would try to use that maybe, and this eliminates all that. Basically, a dog will only be scratched for fighting while they are off leash and competing in the hunt. Now, one thing to be clear is that this does, in fact, include timeout periods while they are off leash. They're still not saved by that. Just because they're in a timeout, if they're still off leash, during the hunt that is a timeout, they can still be scratched for fighting. So let's give a couple scenarios and let's just use two dogs for uh, example's sake. So let's say dog A is at the tree, uh, handle is tied up and you're shining the tree. While you're shining the tree, here comes dog B comes into the tree. And let's say for instance, in the first example, let's make it uh, uh, dog B comes in, walks by dog A and goes up to it and grabs dog A that is on the leash. Here's the question, can dog B be scratched for fighting with a dog that is on leash? And the answer is yes, he can. Dog B is number one, is considered the aggressor. He's the one that started the fight. He was seen grabbing dog A, so therefore he's considered the aggressor. Number two, he's off leash and therefore 
Dog B meets all requirements to be scratched for fighting. In scenario number two, let's change it up just slightly. Again, we have Dog A, who is tied at the tree, and you're shining his tree. Here comes Dog B comes in, walks by Dog A. The only difference in this scenario, let's say Dog A grabs Dog B as it's walking by and pins it to the ground. Dog A is considered now the aggressor, the one who started the fight. In this case, Dog A is considered the aggressor, but he is on leash. So therefore, Dog A does not meet the requirement to be scratched for fighting in this situation. Why? Simple, because he was on leash. So that's the point to make and keep in mind with this rule change, is a dog that is on leash cannot be scratched for fight. It's that simple. I'd like to thank everybody for taking their time to watch these clips of us uh, tell you about the rule changes. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to, to talk to someone about it than to try to put it in writing and for people to interpret it in different ways. For this rules change year, we have more than we've ever had before and we didn't think we'd see this many passing, but I can tell you there's a lot of people that are excited about the, these changes. Some tend to think that it's going to be a lot to keep up with. I really don't think so. The guys that are really into the night hunts that take it seriously, they'll adapt to them very quickly. You can call uh, us here at the office anytime you'd like to. Email Trevor or I. Email us with any questions you might have. Uh, anytime you see us out at a hunt somewhere at an event, uh, don't be afraid to come up and ask us about any rules questions you might have. We, I'm one of those guys that loves rules discussions. It's not much fun when somebody starts fussing and arguing about this or that. We have procedures in place. If you don't agree with a call that is being made, follow those procedures and get your uh, situation question, take it back. And that's what it's there for. We do want to get it right and that's why you have those procedures in place. So exercise those. No sense in getting mad about something. Here's the thing to remember. Judges are often in a position where they have to make a call regardless. Sometimes they're not always sure. Problem is they are required to make a call. Sometimes they will make a call not even being quite sure. So you should also keep that in mind because that's when your right to question it comes into play and that's why there's a procedure to and follow those to get it corrected. So enjoy the new rules and we hope you like them. They work well for everybody. See you guys soon.